And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Howdy folks, Darren back with you here at Cross Timbers Farm. Welcome to 8th Day Chronicles. Exciting day today. Uh, a ram pump fascinates me. Uh, we are here at our natural spring and we're getting ready to fire up our ram pump for 2023. We only used it a couple months last year and we really didn't water any animals with it. We just ran it some to make sure that it was going to be reliable and um, it would provide water to our pasture consistently and reliably before we started a fencing project because uh, the whole project of utilizing this back pasture for uh, animals to be on was the whole hold up on this back pasture of being able to put animals on it was the lack of water. We didn't want to start a major fencing project until we were positive that we could have consistent reliable water in that pasture to water our, our dairy herd. So uh, we think the hard freeze weather is over for the year. It's almost April. It's, it's I think maybe uh, the last day of March, somewhere in that area right now. And uh, we got down to about 29 last night, but uh, I think we'll have some frosty mornings still, but I think our hard freezes are over. And this ram pump works off of flowing, falling water that's constantly moving. So um, I'm pretty confident that uh, any issues we would have with it freezing are over for the year so it's time to fire it up it's uh, uh, time to move these animals into the pasture as soon as we can uh, get them off our hay fields where we've had them for the winter get them into this back pasture that we just completed the fencing project on and uh, before we can do that we got to get the stock tank full and have water flowing into it uh, consistently. So today we're firing up the ram pump. One reason we decided to go with an off-grid ram pump is we really just never liked the idea of running a UF wire, underground feeder wire down here to a pump from our barn. It's a pretty long way. Uh, we'd have to dig lines. Uh, we do have a well up near our barn, an agriculture well, that we could have dug lines back here and, and buried water lines or just run a pump down to here. Uh, we just didn't want to do that. We wanted this to be reliable all the time, uh, off grid, to have consistent water to our pasture. And we were blessed on our property to have three freshwater, cold, cool, clear springs. These springs of water come right out of the ground, as clear and as pure as you can get. Uh, I routinely just bend over and cut my hands and get me a drink of this water. It is fantastic. Probably the bottled water you buy in the grocery store wouldn't even compare to what's pouring into this this little uh, tub here out of this spring. It is amazing water, amazing. We've actually had it tested and uh, it was rich in everything that it needs to be. Minerals and all that good stuff, it's all in there. Uh, no 
uh, coliforms and all that junk either. It's nice water because we're catching it right out of the spring head. Fantastic. Uh, we could have fenced an alleyway down to this water source and fenced it off and just let the, the dairy herd come down out of the pasture down into the woods here and drank right from this spring head. We, I never liked that idea. You, you've heard the saying, we all live downstream. When you let animals come in and start standing and drinking right out of this spring head, anytime you have animals standing in a certain area drinking, you're gonna get manure and urine. And all of a sudden, those animals standing around this will just really make a mud hole in here. And then they're, they're pooping and peeing and that's going into the branch. We call a very small stream of water here in the mountains a branch. And when these uh, streams start from the spring head, they're small, so we call them a branch. Um, animals standing right here uh, doing their business while they're drinking, all of a sudden that, that urine and manure, fecal matter starts washing down the branch uh, for several hundred yards, then off our property onto the neighbors, then the next and the next, and it's just a chain reaction. It just keeps going until uh, you, you've, you've upset a very delicate ecosystem. We felt it best to never let the animals even near these spring heads and figure out a way to take this water from right here and pump it to the pasture where um, none of these fragile areas are, are disturbed. So uh, thanks to uh, landthehouse.com last year, he helped me get a ram pump going and it was a game changer for this back pasture to be able to get water to that pasture. And a ram pump is a fascinating uh, tool, uh, I guess you could call it, because it works off of flowing, falling water. It will pump water for every foot of drop, it will pump water seven feet up. So uh, we've got from our spring head here, we've got pipe ran down to a low place um, where we have about nine feet of drop and we can pump 50, 60 feet uphill uh, somewhere in that area. Um, actually, last year, I think I had it pumping probably about 80 feet high and it was still pumping it up there with that little, uh, uh, quarter inch pump but today our water it's early in the year and our water is flowing really bold so we're putting in the half inch pump we have a half inch and a uh, I'm sorry it was not I said quarter it's a uh, three eighths pump uh, the smallest ram pump uh, Seth at land the house has ever built and come up with we have one, so when our water drops low, we'll install that 3 8 pump. But we have half inch water line running uh, about 80 feet to a stand, two inch stand pipe, and then we'll hook our pump and get it going. I'm looking forward to this. Ram pumps are fascinating. Uh, our whole system back here from the, from the uh, water to the fences, Everything we do back here is totally off-grid. Nothing relies on the power company, and we're happy with that. Okay, first thing we gotta do is let's do a quick inspection of our spring head, since we've not used it through the winter. Make sure everything's flowing good. Let's make sure our pipe, our half-inch pipe, water pipe, PVC pipe, is good. Uh, we got to get it rotated and get the end back down into the water. And well, first we got to pour some water down that pipe uh, to uh, open the valve down there in a little bit. Once some water's in it, 
and we open it and it'll create a suction to, to fill this water line up. Let's get started. We've raised the lid on our spring house. We did build a cover around our spring house here. We have an old bathtub buried uh, right there for a water catchment system. We have a frame around it and we have put tin all around it to keep this area covered, to keep it uh, clean and debris out of it. And you can see we have a really good flow of water. Uh, we should have more than enough to run this half inch pump. If the water keeps flowing this well, then uh, all summer would be fantastic. Usually midsummer by August, the flow starts dropping. And at that point, we may have to install the 3 8 pump. Okay, we're down in the, the branch here at the place that our ram pump will be positioned. We have our line coming in and uh, it's been here since last year. We kept it all open through the winter so nothing would freeze in it uh, and drained it good. We've poured water down here uh, from the very head. We've got our valve closed. So now we're gonna open the valve. Uh, I need to move this board that I use for uh, lay tools and stuff on so we can raise the pipe and drop it uh, if we need to, to pull water. We do have a stand pipe right here. And uh, we installed the stand pipe last year after the pump was already installed. So this is my first time starting the pump with a, with a stand pipe. But for now, I'm just gonna turn it on and see what happens. Okay, all kind of dirty, muddy water. All right, I'm hoping up top that that really suctioned because it's pulling a lot of water. Really dirty. Okay, it's still, it's down to a trickle. Let's see if that got water going up top. When that water's released, what happens is it the air that's in that line, the water pushes it through and it creates a suction on the top, a siphon, so to speak. Uh, all right, we're down to just a trickle. Uh, let's give it a minute and see if the water rushes on down. And this may take a few times of us going up and pouring water into the line more and more each time. If this one didn't do it, the next time I'll double how much I pour in it that I did the first time. Okay, so far nothing. Uh, I may have to cap off that stand pipe. That stand pipe on the top is vented and it may be sucking air in from right there in order to get a suction going or a siphon. I think that may be breaking my siphon. So I may have to get a, uh, a ladder and get up there and uh, cap that off so no air can get into it from that point until this gets going. All right. Nothing so far. Sometimes it takes to go that distance. It could take the siphon a little bit to get here. We'll give it just a few minutes and if nothing, then we're gonna have to uh, go get a small ladder so I can get up to the top of that stand pipe and cap it off to keep any air from coming into the system from there till it gets full. All right, be right back with you. Okay, right there is our stand pipe. And you can see it's nine feet and it usually overflows when the system's working and uh, pulling water well. So we have uh, capped the stand pipe. So we filled it back full of water again and we've capped our stand pipe to keep air from sucking into the system. So now let's see what we've got. 
if we can create a, a uh, suction or a uh, what is typically referred to as a siphon. Okay, here we go. We're going to see again if we can create a siphon. We've capped our nine foot standpipe to keep air from sucking into the system to break our siphon. All right. Boy, the water I poured in from up there is coming down. All right, it ran real dirty for a minute, now it's clear. Hey. We should hear some air come out. All right, our flow is dying off. If our siphon worked, we should get a bigger, oh, there comes a bigger flow. Oh, it stopped with air. There it come again. I think we're gonna be good, maybe. Fingers crossed. It's running. Stop it. I'd love to see that uh, standpipe flow. Of course, I've got it capped. I'll never know if it starts overflowing. I can hear it going into the standpipe. That's a good sign. Yes. Oh, I can hear water bubbling up in that standpipe. I'd say if I went up there right now and took the cap off that standpipe, the water, air and water would just shoot out the top of it. Folks, I think we're gonna be good. Oh, yes. I hear air bubbling out of it. Stop it again. Clean, cool, fresh as it can be, coming right out of the ground. Natural mountain spring water. And you know our dairy goat herd's gonna be drinking water uh, that a lot of people in cities and all that has to rely on municipality water and all would pay big money for. Yeah, I'm hearing some air. Okay. I think I'm gonna go in and cap my standpipe now. I think that my standpipe's not gonna work uh, as intended until I bleed the air out of it. I think it's probably packed with a lot of air. So I'll be right back with you and then we're gonna hook this ram pump up. Okay, folks, we're back and we've had a, a delay. It's a couple hours later. My standpipe, where it, it's a two inch standpipe and where it joins the half inch drive pipe. Of course, there's a T that comes up to the standpipe. And last year when I installed this standpipe, uh, I cut the PVC pipe coming from the T up to the union that uh, goes to two inch. I cut it too long and it left about that much of that half inch pipe standing between them. And I knew that was a weak point. A couple hours ago, when I went to take the uh, the air vents off the standpipe and seal them with a cap. Uh, when I pulled on that to get it loose, uh, it came off my cable and started to lean and that little half inch pipe at the bottom just snapped. I should have knew that was gonna happen. The half inch, the two inch reduced down to half inch is a pretty drastic re reduction, 
but it would have been okay if I would have brought them all the way together instead of leaving a gap with that little half inch pipe between them. That's where it snapped. So a couple hours later and a trip to the uh, plumbing store and I've repaired it and we got, this time I repaired it right. I set that uh, two inch reducer all the way down on top of that half inch T so there's no weak point for it to wiggle and break. So that should have solved that. I've re-poured water in the line and we're gonna to try to get this siphon started one more time. I just returned from priming the line again. The first prime didn't work. We tried to put a little more water down it this time. Let's cross our fingers, hope our prime works this time enough to start a siphon. Let's give it a try. Okay, here we go for our second try. We're gonna turn our ball valve, let the water flow out, and hopefully it'll, when it pulls, this, this water pulls out, it runs out here, it will pull a siphon on the other end, and we'll start hearing the standpipe fill up. Here we go. Okay. A good flow. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, so far a good flow. And it should slow down because there's gonna be some air in between. Okay, it's slowing. I see it's full air bubbles. All right, it's slowed way down. Now, let's hope it kicks. Come on now. We should see a surge here in a minute if it's, if it's gonna work. Hmm. We may be in for round number three if priming. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And it died back off, it's, it's pulsing a little bit. Maybe it's going to. I don't know, folks. All right, I'm just gonna shut it off now. Okay, folks. We've got it running. We've had an array of issues. Apparently last, late last fall, when I took the ram pump up for the winter, my union down here, I left the O-ring in it apparently. After I went to the plumbing store and got the parts to fix the standpipe, uh, got the, got the, drive pipe primed and the standpipe filled up and I couldn't get my uh, swing valve to work to start pumping and started inspecting things and come to find out down here at my union was leaking and it was leaking pretty bad so I pulled it apart I thought well that thing didn't cross thread it went in it screwed together too easily and uh Upon looking at pulling it apart and looking at it, my O-ring was missing. And I don't remember seeing it when I put the uh, union together. So it's running now. I had to go find another O-ring. Uh, I went and searched through all my old spare parts and found an O-ring. And it's not leaking now and it's pumping. Let's go up the hill and see if we're getting water to our stock tank. We've done run the hose up the hill. So let's go see what's happening up there. Okay, as you can see, our pump sits right down in the, the branch at the lowest part. Our standpipe is right there where the ladder is. We got about 15 feet down, maybe 18 feet down to the pump. 
And then from there we have a garden hose going up the hill. Let's just follow this up the hill. How a ram pump works is just absolutely amazing. And I already see water falling up there. Look at this, folks. Flowing spring water from way down there in the bottom to our stock tank. <laughs> well, it's flowing out on the ground right now, but let's get in here and get our stock tank ready, prepped and ready. Let's just pull this out of the way so we're not working in a mud hole. Ram pump's running. Fantastic. It's filling up our uh, water trough. When we made this water trough, we just cut a 55 gallon barrel in half and built a stand for it. We put a drain, a bulkhead adapter in the very bottom in the, in the right corner for a drain so we can clean it out. And we've got an overflow. We put another bulkhead adapter here, an overflow, which runs right back down toward the branch. Uh, we'll do a little tidying it. I think I've got it a little bit out of level. It's, I need to get to either drop this end or raise that end just a little bit. I can see the water sloping this way. But in any event, man, I'm telling you, you, you see the flow. Uh, free water and it's coming right out of the ground out of a spring head way up there flowing down into a gully in the branch down here uh, probably 55 60 feet downhill and pumping it from there up to here with no energy no power, no fuel, nothing but flowing, falling water. And I can't take credit for this. Uh, Seth Johnson at LandTheHouse.com Seth's a super guy, very knowledgeable on all things ram pump and micro hydro. He's into a lot of different things. But these ram pumps, uh, are amazing that the physics how it works off of pressure and closing valves and moving water to push water uphill like this is just simply amazing and it's allowed us to be able to use this uh, back pasture that we've not been able to use this will be the first year we've had anything on it in probably five years we had some quarter horses my daughter had two quarter horses that she allowed on it about five years ago but they had access to the whole area we didn't keep the gate closed and keep them locked back here they were able to go to the barn for water and then just come freely through the gate back here this will be the first time ever we've had animals uh, back in this pasture and they're limited just to this pasture because we had no water back here and uh, this pump's been running oh maybe 15 minutes and it's it's a fourth full uh, that right there is more than enough water for our dairy herd uh, to keep them all hydrated all throughout the summer and the dog uh, you know, that may not seem like a whole lot of volume of water, but that running 24 seven 
is a lot of water. It's more water than we'll use back here. Fantastic, fantastic uh, setup that that Seth at Land the House does with these ram pumps. He's just uh, he's a ram pump guru, uh, and I encourage you if you uh, have falling flowing water somewhere on your property or that you have access to and you would like to get that water uphill into a pasture to a barn uh, whatever that case may be and it never have a power bill for it never have to buy fuel for it uh, give Seth a call look him up landthehouse.com he done a fantastic job helping me with this ram pump and it's working phenomenal Okay, our water's going. Next thing, all we got to do is pull a shelter into this pasture, and uh, I think for starters, we're going to put our, our bucks in this pasture first with Raven. The solar uh, fence energizer slash charger's doing well. The water's doing well. We're ready. Thanks for being with us for our startup for our ram pump for this year. We appreciate it much, and we'd really appreciate if you'd subscribe to our channel. God bless, and have a good evening.